Good afternoon. I have for you a good video here, a framework, a perspective. I am Mr. Ish. We're looking here at the overlap of two circles. Two circles that overlap in a region that's shaded. Both circles having an equal area. Seemingly this concept appears easy, but it is a little complicated. I think you know what I'm referring to. If you have two circles drawn and you have this shaded area in between, how can one go about determining the area of this, the framework that's involved? With regards to that determination, each has a center over here. We're talking about equal circles, two equal circles coming together, creating an overlap, and you're trying to find the area of this overlap. Think about everything in this way. If you have these two circles at a certain distance, there's no overlap, therefore there's no area. Consider this next scenario where there is no overlap, but there's the contact being made over here again. From this center to this center, there's no overlap, therefore no area. But as these two circles move in together, an overlap develops and now we can start thinking about an area. How about this situation where you have one circle and the other circle has a complete overlap. Of course, I haven't drawn it too well, but here the area is very well of overlap equal to the area of that circle because you have a complete overlap. We're looking at that intermediate instance or situation where you have some overlap but no complete overlap. You basically have two extremes over here with regards to the distance. If you look at from one center to the other center, a certain distance that is present between the two centers, there is a extreme over here. If the distance is zero, which means both of those circles have become coincident, as is this case where D is equal to zero, you have complete overlap versus that instance where the distance is less than or equal to 2R. What does this less than or equal to 2R mean? It means exactly what you might be thinking. From here to here is a radius. From here to here is a radius. If you were to add these together in this instance right over here, you have two radii which are connected in a, in a straight line. That's exactly what we're talking about. Here there's no overlap, so the area of the overlap is equal to zero. In this instance where you have a complete overlap, the two circles, equal circles are coincident. The centers are on point. The overlap is complete. You have 100% overlap. The area is equal to pi r squared. We're looking at those instances in between. How do you calculate this area where you have some overlap but not a complete overlap? And that will be the framework of this video where you're going to try to create a formula. It's not easy, but we're going to try to do it and we're going to try to explain it to you in a good manner. There is a lot involved over here and we have to examine it in a piece by piece manner. Think about this situation right over here. Two equal circles. If I don't draw them equal, imagine they are. You have this area which is in between the region of overlap that we're interested in for two equal circles. If you were to draw a radii onto this top and the lower part of each of these overlap regions, you know we have a distance involved, the distance between the two centers. When you look at this part right over here of just one circle, you end up seeing, what do you end up seeing? You basically end up seeing a sector. Within that sector, if you were to draw a line vertically down, you end up seeing a triangle, a larger sector, a smaller triangle, and this area of partial overlap. Why am I calling this partial overlap? Because again, if you focus on this and I erase all of this shading I've done, it's partial overlap because this overlap is represented or determined or affected by two circles. Here I'm only showing you a single circle. If it's affected by two circles, it's affected by two sectors and I'm only showing you one. I can only literally show you only a single overlap region, which is what I'm talking about. If I were to, within this depiction, draw a vertical line down and I have this portion right over here, which is my sector, then that shaded region right there which corresponds to that is exactly what you're seeing. I have a triangle, I have a sector and I have the shaded region right over here. A corresponding image to exactly what you're seeing over here would be this. Now this is me trying to do a little bit of fancy artwork and right here. A corresponding triangle, a corresponding sector and a corresponding shaded region. If I were to move this, this word and this onto this side and I were to cross some past the midline mark. If this is my midline mark and I was to cross them past that midline mark, this is exactly what we'll get. This part will come right over here, as you see over here. That part will come right here onto this side and you have this union of these two shaded regions to give you exactly what you see over here, which now I'm going to fully color. So that's all that we're dealing with over here. 
the union of two sectors with their individual shaded regions the sector is bound and affected by the difference of the area of the triangle will give you these shaded regions which when they're combined give you exactly what you're talking about a complete overlap our entire framework depends on you looking at only a single instance over here of a sector with its triangle and its shaded region once you can do the determination over here all you have to do is multiply it by two because i've shown you here two shaded regions here combined to give you the complete overlap that you're studying right here we have a complete overlap but we've taken this complete overlap and we we can cut it and divide it into half and look everything in a singular half format when you multiply everything by two to get the complete picture so that's how the framework evolves and that's how it will develop so what we start with here is a sector which has been derived from a circle we draw a vertical line down we end up having this triangle we end up having this area which is shaded i'm not shading it we have this distance right here from here which is my distance distance between the two centers of those two circles that distance represents everything up to this point right over here which basically represents the base of the triangle look at it if you were to take this distance and divide it by two, you're going from the center right up to this, uh, or right up to this line of this triangle, the base of the triangle, that's your D over two. That's exactly what we're talking about. You have a certain angle of this sector which you have to worry about. You have these two radii because a line drawn from the center of the circle to any point on your circle on either side of this sector are equivalent to your radii. This right here is my entire sector within which I have this triangle. If I can find the area of the sector and I can minus the area of the triangle, I'll get the area of the shaded region. SR, we'll call that SR right here, is my area of shaded region. But this area of shaded region is only half of the overlap. If I find this area of the shaded region and I multiply by two, I'll have my area of the overlap that I'm interested in. So that right there is the framework. We have to learn how to do the area calculation for the sector. Minus from that the area calculation of this triangle. We'll get the shaded region, we multiply by two and we get our area of overlap. So let's start working on this in a piece by piece manner. We look at the sector first and we look at the triangle. Then we'll do the difference. We'll get the shaded region, we'll multiply the answer by two and that'll give me exactly what I want for the area of the overlap. All right, and so it begins. We'll draw the sector out and right now we're focusing on the area of the sector. Remember there are multiple ways of doing it. I'm only showing you one way. This is my center and there's a certain angle over here and I, I know from this one center to this center is distance of D. But if I'm going the half of it, which I'm only examining everything in terms of half, I have a certain distance over here which is D over 2 and this distance is right here to the base of this triangle. When I draw a base of this triangle, I can draw an actual two triangles by going across like this, right? And I've split this angle theta into two parts. One is theta over two, and the other one is theta over two. I have a right triangle drawn over here. This right here is my radius. That right there is my radius. Now what we have to do is find the area of the sector. And we know the area of the sector is always equal to a half r squared theta. We know what the radius here is r. We have to first find theta. Theta over two is not my angle over here. We have to do a proper calculation of this theta and we'll plug that in and we'll get our area of sector. And how can it go? We have to uh, do the calculation of this theta. I'm drawing only half of these triangles you're seeing over here. The other one would be right over here. I have a theta over 2. I have a certain height of this triangle d over 2. Remember, half of this between the two centers is d over 2. I have a radius here, I have a right angle over there. How about this? Cosine theta over 2 is equal to adjacent or hypotenuse is equal to d over 2 over r which is equal to d over 2 r i have to solve for theta because i have to plug in there theta over 2 is equal to inverse cosine or arc cosine d over 2 r this is all me just calculating for this theta which will get plugged right in here theta is equal to 2 times inverse cosine or arc cosine d over 2 r and that right there is the value of this angle theta this angle right here theta which affects that sector area of a sector is equal to half times r squared times theta which is 2 arc cosine minus 1 d over 2 r that's what it is these twos cancel out area of the sector is equal to r squared inverse cosine d over 2 r and that right there is a value i will save and this right here is my area of sector and that part is done now 
as I told you originally area of sector minus area of triangle will give you this area of the shaded region which when you multiply by 2 will give you the total area of that overlap. Now we have to focus on this triangle. We again know going from here to right here we have a certain distance to D, distance of D. Let's look at this triangle and let's separate it out from that sector because the sector continues on like this. I'm not focusing on the sector anymore. I'm only focusing on the triangle. We know we have two right angles here. Here's R, here's R, here's theta over two. And I know from here to here is D over two, which can represent the height of the triangle. If you were to ro rotate it and look it up, it's D over two. This entire represents the base of the triangle and half of it will be B over two. Let's pluck out this one triangle we're looking at. We have D over two over here. Right, we have B over two and we have R and we have this 90 degrees. We have to solve here for B because we know area of a triangle, right? Is equal to half base times height. We already know what height is, height is D over two because this distance between the two centers is your height when you divide it by two is the height of the triangle that forms. We have to solve for this B over two. Let's use the Pythagorean formula, A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared b over 2 square plus d over 2 square is equal to r square we can expedite all of this b square over 4 is equal to r square minus d square over 4 i've opened up these squares which is really equal to 4 r square all over 4. i just did a common denominator over here and i have 4 r square minus d square over 4. you can literally cancel out these fours because they would b is equal to the base of the triangle is equal to 4 r square minus d square this computation doesn't give you the value of b over 2, it ends up giving you the value of the entire base of the triangle. I know the base, I know the height of the triangle, and I know the formula half base times height. I plug them in and I'll get the area of this triangle. Area is equal to half times, let's just do height first, d over 2 times base root 4 r square minus d square, which is what? You will have d over 4 root 4 r square minus d square. That right there is my area of triangle, which I will very well put right over here. The area of the triangle now happens to be d over four, square root of four r square minus d square. Remember this formula derivation or framework we're doing for this overlap area determination is to do n involving r's and d's, radii and distance. We're not looking at any theta value which will come in here or angle. You can do all of this with regards to angle. But our formula determination will be such that you will only have to know the values of the radius and the distance between the two center, centers of those two circles from which you can then calculate the overlap formula. And that will be a good formula for you. So the area of the shaded region is equal to area of the sector minus area of the triangle. I'll show you again right here. Area of the shaded region, which is this right over here. This is just half of that region which represents a full overlap. Two of these shaded regions represents a full overlap as I was showing you earlier and you know I drew something like this. This would be the corresponding right here developed from the opposing circle. Two of these halves or semi-lunars or whatever you want to call them will represent a complete overlap. We're looking at just one of these shaded regions. So we have this formula over here. Area of this shaded region is equal to area of this entire sector minus area of the triangle and we have that. So let's compute and bring these values in. The area of the sector is right here. R square inverse cosine D over 2 R. Area of the triangle is D over 4 root 4 R square minus D square. Now this represents the area of a single shaded region but the area of the overlap, right? The overlap is based on two shaded regions as you know here. Here is one shaded region here and here's the corresponding. Two shaded regions gives you a one full overlap. Therefore, the area of the overlap is all of this times two. You'll do two times the difference of that, all of that. R square inverse cosine D over two R minus D over four root four R square minus D square. And that right there is your formula for the area of overlap for two circles that are coming together using the limitation I told you where the distance must be larger than or equal to zero because and that's a complete overlap and it must be less than at least two radii otherwise you have no overlap and there's no need to even do the entire exercise because with no overlap or the distance being excessively broad there's no contact between the circles no overlap and we don't need any formula 
This is for those areas in between the intermediate zones where you have some overlap. The formula is this, two times the area of a single shaded region. And that single shaded region is the difference between the area of the sector and the area of the triangle. And all you would need to know now to actually determine a numerical value for this area of overlap would be to know the radius of the circles that are involved and the distance between the two circles, centers, that's it. If you know that, you would very well have a good numerical value for the area of that overlap. But this is just one way of looking at this overlap with no worry about here with regards to angles or this angle over here because the other formula would just be area of sector minus area of uh, triangle but all with regards to theta and radii. I'll put that formula here for you. I'm not showing you how you derive it. I'll put it here for you just for your curiosity. That formula would turn out to be this. It would be the area of a sector which is always half r squared theta minus the area of a triangle with regards to theta and that would be r squared over 2 sine theta. We can probably in one video show you how you can derive all of this. And this right here would be the area of a single shaded region. Of course, you'd have to multiply this by 2 to get the area of the full overlap. I'm putting the 2 over here. And in all of this presentation, you can even isolate the r squared over 2. You can do r squared over 2 times theta minus sine theta, all of this times 2. And this 2 and this radius, 2 over here, will cancel out. So the area of the overlap would be r squared parentheses theta minus sine theta. But you see in this formula, you're only seeing the radius and the angle of the sector come into play. There's no distance. In this formula I've given you here, you're not seeing the angle come into play, but you're looking at the radii and you're looking at the distance of the two centers. So it doesn't matter which perspective you use, both of these will lead you to the same numerical value for that overlap region. And with that, I say thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Have a good day. Bye.